This is a bison, the heaviest land animal roaming Europe today. Full-grown males can hit about six feet tall at that distinctive hump weighing over 1,760 pounds. These horned titans were nearly wiped out, but we'll get into that story a bit later. For over 70 years now, dedicated conservationists have been steadily bringing back bison, and their numbers are on the rise. Recently, people decided to take things up a notch. Instead of just restoring old populations, they wanted to create a whole new one. In Spain, they brought in bison from Poland to release them onto private land in Andalusia. Essentially, it's like a big sanctuary spanning around 2,500 acres, already home to many other rare disappearing species. The plan is for this to become the southernmost habitat for European bison, assuming everything goes smoothly, that is. Introducing a species like the European bison to a new territory isn't something that happens overnight. First, there's preparation and then careful observation to see if the animals can even adapt to their new habitat. Due to the climate conditions, this part of Spain can be quite challenging at times. Still, scientists decided to give it a shot, and the animals hit the road. Before setting them free, 18 bison covered around 1,870 miles in a truck. Then they let the animals loose and started carefully observing them. If you forget to hit the like button, do it right now. Let's keep going. GPS collars were put on some mature female bison while camera traps were installed across various spots in the area. This allowed for a thorough understanding of where the bison were roaming, what they were up to, and how they interacted with other species, whether directly or indirectly. Moreover, fecal samples from bison and their fellow residents, red deer and does, were collected monthly, allowing for a direct comparison of their diets. Yep, it's all part of the carefully managed introduction process. Did you expect it to be easy? Additionally, cameras mounted on drones were used to understand how bison affect the landscape. Overall, this monitoring showed that bison are doing pretty good, coping well with heat, eating well, and even forming groups. After some time, a baby was born, the first member of the new generation. And that's really cool, because offspring raised here will be better adapted to local conditions. By the way, those bison brought in from Poland are just one example. In Spain, there are actually 18 breeding centers for bison, and they're really making it work. Over the last decade, the number of animals in these centers has grown from 22 to 150, and it's still on the rise. It's interesting that only two European countries fund such projects. Spain isn't one of them because they figure since bison are already extinct, there's no point in financing them. So these centers rely on donations and volunteers. Plus, it's illegal to release bison into the wild, even in Spain. Again, once they're extinct, they're extinct. End of story. That's why these centers are and will be located on private lands or enclosed areas in national parks. Legally, bison must have an owner who assumes responsibility for them. Despite this, enthusiasts who transported them to Andalusia are now pushing the central government to classify bison as a protected wild species. This could eventually pave the way for releasing the animals into the wild. Sending European bison back to the wild isn't just about them being wild animals that should live in nature rather than in reserves. These bison are actually quite beneficial creatures. Similar to American bison managing grasslands, European bison could assist in establishing and preserving open meadows and pastures where numerous insects and birds reside. They can also spread seeds, fertilize, and loosen the soil for plant growth. It's no wonder they keep an eye on bison with drones. They really change the landscape a lot, partly because of how they act. Bison just love rolling around in dust bags. When they see a spot where the ground is already exposed, they know sandy surfaces are perfect for their daily routine, and they go at it like crazy. If you're a dog owner, you've probably seen your pet do something similar. However, bison weigh much more than any dog, and after the bath, the exposed ground stays exposed. Though in Andalusia, bison spend too little time to talk about any serious changes in the surrounding area, but we can look at other places. The European bison is a key species that plays a vital ecological role in shaping landscapes. Aside from munching on tons of grass and nibbling shrubs, these bison also change the landscape. They peel bark off trees, bust through thick undergrowth as they pass, and leave patches of bare ground behind. These open spaces offer opportunities for less competitive plants to establish themselves. 
In the Southern Carpathians, reintroduced bison are already helping to create and maintaining a mixed landscape of half-forested, half-open spaces. These big animals eat excess plants on forest edges, meadows, and woodland clearings. As the landscape becomes more diverse and plant life flourishes, it provides habitats for a variety of other grazing animals, small mammals, birds, and invertebrates. Basically, where there are bison, there is biodiversity. By the way, thanks to bison-eating shrubs, dense parts of the forest open up, letting in more sunlight and allowing more grass to grow. These animals, by the way, can chomp through about 66 pounds of vegetation a day. When they were released into a 49-acre oak forest in 2010, seven bison cleared the undergrowth, saving around $72,000 that would have been spent paying people for the same job. Remember when we talked about bison rolling around on the ground? Well, they don't just munch on plants, they also make holes in the ground. Over time, these holes fill up with rainwater. They become perfect spots for frogs to lay eggs and watering holes for other wild animals. During winter, bison create paths, clear snow, thus helping smaller animals find food. They're just amazingly helpful. Now let's take a moment to discuss bison fur. It's crucial for them, especially in the winter, but come springtime, they need to get rid of that extra layer. Bison start rubbing against trees, bushes, random posts, basically anything that seems fitting. They do this just in time for spring when birds enter their breeding season and need material for building nests. Bison fur is a great choice. Although it's not typically used for constructing the sturdier outer parts of nests, instead, birds line the inside of their nests with fur because it's soft and warm. Birds and bison seem to have perfectly synced schedules. By the way, if birds get to pick between bison fur and, say, deer fur, they'd totally go for the bison. Researchers even suspect that the material a nest is made of affects how successful the birds are at reproducing. Maybe bison fur is like a status symbol for them or something. Now let's talk about something less pleasant. The benefit of bison that comes with a not-so-pleasant smell. Yup, it's dung. Remember those 18 bison that were brought to Spain? Within a few days, dung beetles took notice of them and started feeding on the dung. Why is that important? Over 20% of Mediterranean dung beetle species are endangered, mainly due to farm animals' dung being contaminated with various medications. While they help animals live longer and stay healthy, they inadvertently wipe out the valuable components that insects seek in dung. Bison feces, on the other hand, contain no harmful substances and are instead packed with beneficial nutrients. Dung beetles might not be everyone's favorite bugs, but they play a crucial role in ecosystems. Without them, natural systems struggle to break down waste and recycle nutrients. Ultimately, without dung beetles, the whole balance would be thrown off. If we have more bison around, there'll be more dung, which means more beetles, and that's a win for nature. But dung beetles aren't the only ones happy about this. Different kinds of flies lay their eggs in bison dung, leading to a boom in larva. Birds get more food too, flocking to these piles of droppings where various insects gather. Don't forget, bison are the largest mammals in Europe. They're totally unique and no other species can handle all that work for them. Both bison dung and urine serve as vital sources of nitrogen, phosphorus, calcium, sulfur, and magnesium for microbes, plants, and other animals. This natural biological function is the main way nutrients get into meadows and forests in certain regions. And let's not forget the active spread of seeds through dung. It's quite the active process. Researchers have estimated that, on average, one bison defecates eight times a day, generously sharing goodies with everyone around. Even when bison don't shed their fur, fertilize the surroundings, or dig up puddle spots, they still benefit other animals. For instance, they have a sort of partnership with magpies. The birds pick parasites off the horned giants, and it's a win-win situation. Jackdaws do the same. Bison carcasses serve as a valuable source of nutrients and food even after death, attracting a variety of animals ranging from foxes to mongooses and from golden eagles to magpies depending on the region. Despite the numerous benefits bison bring to the table, it seems like humans still want more out of them. It looks like there are plans to turn bison into drought and fire rescuers. The thing is, Spain suffers from yearly forest fires, droughts, depletion of water resources, land degradation, and desertification. Since 2011, the number of forest fires in the country has increased by 20%, and their destructive power has risen by 15%. Due to global warming, Spain's climate is heating up, and there's also less rain. Experts predict droughts will soon become 10 times worse than they are now. This means shortages of everything, including drinking water, problems for farmers, and a lot of suffering for everyone. 
Bison could be the solution, as they naturally help maintain forests just by living their bison lives, eating, trampling soil, and defecating. The trick is that these animals do it on a massive scale, far more effectively than anything humans can manage. Bison are even more efficient and in greater harmony with their surroundings compared to domestic livestock which could potentially handle this task. Also, bison are significantly larger and heavier, allowing them to create pathways and dense vegetation. Also, by a happy coincidence, they prefer consuming plants that are most susceptible to wildfires. Actually, farm animals could make a difference even without relying on bison, but nowadays fewer and fewer people in Spain are into farming. This translates to fewer sheep, which means fewer animals to eat all those highly flammable bushes. With bison already being raised and planned for release into the wild, why not make the most of them for everyone's benefit? It makes practical sense. Bison are a natural lawnmower, according to experts. They can munch through approximately 66 pounds of vegetation daily, comprising 30% woody fiber and 70% shoots and leaves. They're perfect firefighters. Many people have high hopes for bison. After being absent for 12,000 years, they were brought back to the United Kingdom and now they're expected to act as eco-engineers. Bison are supposed to restore ancient forests, improve the lives of insects, birds, plants, lizards, and even mushrooms. And now it's probably time to figure out this. If we have to start over and reintroduce bison to certain territories, there must have been something that led to their disappearance, right? But what exactly happened? There came a time when bison vanished entirely from the wild. Not a single one remained. The last wild bison in Europe were hunted down in Poland in 1919 and in Russia in 1927. We might have been farewell to bison forever if not for those that endured in captivity. Around 54 of them were left back then. Thankfully, it proved enough to gradually restore the population. In the 1950s, efforts were made to reintroduce bison into their natural habitat and now their numbers have exceeded 10,000 worldwide. Although scientists believe there were never any bison in Spain, even though there are archaeological finds and cave paintings that suggest otherwise, they actually went extinct too long ago. But scientists have an explanation for this. The finds belong to another species, steppe bison, which disappeared from the peninsula 12,000 years ago. Since then, there haven't been any bison in Spain. Not a single one. The times when European bison roamed freely across vast territories are long gone. By the late ancient and medieval periods, bison had disappeared from much of Europe and Asia. The latest records of this animal in the transitional area of the modern border between Greece, North Macedonia, and Bulgaria date back to the 3rd century AD. In northern Bulgaria, bison only lived until the 9th or 10th century AD. In the Ardennes and Vosges, bison were still occasionally spotted until the 15th century but it was quite rare. In 1513, the Biowoviza forest in Poland was among the last places on Earth where European bison still roamed freely. Do we even have to wonder why bison went extinct? It's pretty obvious. Humans cleared the forests where they lived, took up more and more land, and actively hunted bison for food. During World War I, German troops even killed 600 bison in the Biowoviza forest just for fun, meat, skins, and horns. At that time, only nine bison stayed alive. Also, there was competition with domestic livestock, which, as you remember, have pretty much the same menu as bison. Yes, bison eat a lot, but there's just more livestock, so it's clear who won in the end. By the way, if bison helped so well with fires and droughts, does that mean there were none of those before they went extinct? It's hard to say, at least because the golden age of bison was too long ago. But we can use indirect evidence. For example, there's this study saying that in the Middle Ages, there were about as many forest fires as there were up until 1996. Yeah, it's an old study, but forest fire numbers shot up along with global temperatures, so the data from back then really can't reflect what's happening now, 20 years later. Case in point, the 2022 forest fire season in the European Union ranked as the second most severe in recorded history. The first one happened in 2000, which also wasn't included in the study. Basically, we'll only be able to see the actual impact of bison in real time. We'll just have to wait a bit. See you later.